Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM. Today I'm at the Whitwell and Reefham Railway with my friends. Slave labour. Who had offered to be... Willing volunteer... Stop swinging the layout. Today was their model railway show and I'd been asked to bring along Skull. So with the help of Tom and Charles we were going to be exhibiting for the day. And it didn't take us long to get the layout set up and to test it running. Including a few new locomotives that I hadn't yet shown off on the channel. Like this 1400 and this lovely BR Black Class 08 Shunter. Which was a gift from a group of my friends. Thank you guys very much. The training of Charles and Tom in the rather complex way that Skull operates didn't take long at all. Which is all part of my plan. You see, if I could leave them operating, I was free to go off and check out the rest of the show. The first thing to grab my attention was this large-scale LNER teak, complete with working lighting inside. That was awesome. The first layout to grab my attention was Cromer Beach Shed, which is an O-gauge micro-layout representing the MNGN's well-known engine shed at Cromer Beach, which featured sound-fitted locomotives that really made it come to life. And I particularly liked the fact that they'd modelled the shed with the famous hole in the roof. At the other end of the scale was Tremlin, an N-gauge layout based somewhere on the Great Western Railway. And next to this was the Norfolk Modelers, who specialise in modelling and anything O-gauge who had this amazing collection of hand-built locomotives and rolling stock on display. Representing the preservation era in 009 was Barton Farm, featuring a variety of preserved locomotives running around a small village. And representing single 09 was a Raven Hill with the fictitious Penny Howe Light Railway and features scenery inspired by that on the North Yorkshire Moors. 09 represents a 15 inch gauge railway modelled into 7 mil scale. So that's running trains on N gauge track in an O gauge scale world. It was at this moment I was asked if I wanted to go operating, so of course I said yes. Well, that's very smart as well. That dude, yeah, yeah. It's always really exciting to be able to operate somebody's layout and get behind the scenes. It gives you a new perspective and a real appreciation for how it all works. I found a new scale that I want to model. This may have become a terrible, terrible mistake. Eventually, I managed to separate myself from the controller to go look at some of the other layouts and came across this in SM32 scale. And the theme of this layout was something that I'd not seen before, the modeling of the railways of the First World War, with this layout representing a supply exchange depot somewhere in France. All the locos were either kit built, scratch built or modified or 3D printed, and they're all DCC sound fitted. And he really captured the ambience of that terrifying and terrible time. I particularly liked how the layout wasn't there to pretty or glorify. It looked bleak, it looked dark and scary, and it's a really important thing to model to show the story of the railways, because however much we don't like that part of our history, it's a part of our history that we should always remember. I 
think they've got one in bits at um, the Apedale Railway. They have, yeah. And there's one operating in France. Close It was at this moment I was asked if I wanted to go operating, so of course I said yes. Now I'm not a big fan of DCC sound fitted steam engines, but on internal combustion it really does help set the scene. This is awesome. There's a real sense of weight and power with this. Eventually, the controller was wrestled back off me, and I looked up to see how the guys were doing over on Skull. To see Tom locked into combat with the foe of the O-Gage modeler, three link couplings. Eventually, he got it sorted and carried on operating. Yeah, and not using the giant one we've got here from Tom Lost the other I found it again. It was at this moment I was asked if I wanted to go operating, so of course I said yes. Oh dear. That's fine, that did not buckle up. That should have been your skull back. As you can see, skull is so complicated and such a large layout that it requires two man operation. It's impossible actually to operate it on your own. Actually using the pannier tank. Which admittedly was probably the most that I'd ever actually used it because it is a tiny little bit too big for skull. And from there things escalated with more and more varied locomotives being used on the layout until we started running two, at which point we made the decision that probably I should go away and do something else. So I headed outside to go check out the 7 quarter inch gauge top field light railway because I'd never seen it operating. Oh, yes. It was at this moment I was asked if I wanted to go operating, so of course I said yes. This little thing is a scamp designed by Colin Edmondson and available to buy as a kit or assembled by CMD Engineering and it is powered by two 800 watt electric motors and is exceedingly good fun and I was in love. Meanwhile, Tom was still struggling with O-gauge couplings, and Charles and I had promised that we wouldn't leave him for long. But then the guys at the railway said, did I want to take a train out? So we figured Tom would be okay for a bit longer.
it was around this point we remembered about Tom, so headed back inside, but got distracted by this fabulous little 009 layout, inspired by a railway that used to carry sugar beet to the south bank of the River Yare, close to the village of Claxton in Norfolk. It is documented that the railway's engine was built from a skip wagon chassis and a 1914 Ford Model T, and the beet was transported using 10 side tipper wagons. The best thing about this layout is the fact that it has working tippers, and I just thought this was awesome. It was at this moment I was asked if I wanted to go operating, so of course I said yes. Oh, and you've got the magic couplings as well. There's the white spot. Let's go right in. Yeah, that should. Oh, I love it when it works. I always find it fascinating to see the different ways that different people have made their fiddle yards work. As a professional, no problems. This, when the narrow gauge works, there's something so satisfying about it. Got stop the middle of the way about right there, right there, down there. And then theoretically, this one should run. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the best thing I've ever seen. It's <laughs> <laughs> amusing. How long did it take to get it to actually work as it should? Um, not that long. Um. That's so good. It actually functions as it should and works. And you're actually doing something in the smaller gauges. Like it's normally something you see maybe O gauge or G gauge, or occasionally double O you have moving stuff. But to actually shrink it down and have it on the tiny, tiny trains. It's brilliant, it just makes it all the more satisfying to operate. And having run the train a few more times and loaded up several more wagons, the controller was once again forcibly removed from my hand and I was sent on my way. Now, I could at this point have gone back to give Tom a hand who was still struggling with the O gauge chain links, but I went outside to see the standard gauge. It was at this moment I was asked if I wanted to go operating, so of course I said yes. <laughs> Now I had driven the little Bagley Drury Georgie before and I've really enjoyed it because it's got the same engine as my fire engine and if you want to see the full review it's coming up on the screen now so do check that out as well. Having been ejected from the footplate, I returned indoors to see how my friend Tom was doing. My friend Tom who owns this layout, not the Tom who'd come to help me with Skull. This represents a fictitious station based on the Kelverdon and Trollysbury light railway in Essex, in the middle of the LNER days. And Tom runs strict LNER appropriate stock. Or at least he did, until I came and took over. So sometimes people have commented that maybe I have too many engines for my layout. So what I've done at the show is I have commented a larger layout which can accommodate all of my locomotives. Now this is completely correct for an Eastern period layout in the days of the LNER. Particularly with the National Coal Board, Sentinel and the 08. Absolutely prejudicial. And most of you probably didn't know that the Eastern region actually had panniers and 1400s. Well known parts of uh, the Eastern region. <laughs> it's just mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so this is going to be the furthest this has ever run. My plan was pretty simple. Get all of my stuff out, couple all of my stock together, and give everything a really good run, running many, many times the length of Skull, pulling all of my stock. I want you to know the owner is actually suffering physically because I've got Western region on his Eastern region layout.
Now, as much as I really do love Skull, and I am exceptionally proud to be its owner and be able to take it out places, being able to run an engine with a proper length train on a proper distance was so very exciting because it's so far away from what I normally get to do. That was great! Let's do that again. That's so nice to actually have a train. It was at this moment that we got some news. <laughs> We just found out the results of the best layout. We didn't win, we had four votes, and there's only three of us, and we put all four in. <laughs> so we didn't we didn't beat the other OK layout, and they played legally. <laughs> and that that is disappointing. We cheated and we still lost. We came fifth though. There were more than five layouts, so we cheated and we didn't come last. Okay, cheating with. It works, guys. LMM dropped it. Hmm. And with that over, it was back to running trains. My Conrods are like almost touching the platform. It's beautiful. And whilst the 08 was truly not appropriate for the layout, it didn't half look good marshalling a large train. And I kid you not, the rods were literally millimetres away from the platform. It was super tight. Whilst I'd been operating Tom's layout, he'd been relegated to looking after Skull. And as you can see, he was greatly impressed with the sheer amount of detail and the technical operational challenges it presented. This hasn't been a fair trade. It's a half decent locomotive, but look at it, it just goes! Meanwhile, I'd gone back to testing out engines on the layout with the Terrier, which was doing pretty well. I'd always been led to believe that they weren't particularly powerful, but this handled the train with absolutely no issues whatsoever. Something that was designed by Sentinel was the Super Sentinel, that was a more powerful version that had a cab at each end. Now, this did not exist in model form until now. You may ask, is that just two sentinels connected together? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> that was hugely satisfying. <laughs> What's exciting is a lot of my locomotives are second hand, but that one, that one is brand new to me. So I know that this is not only the furthest run it has ever done, but this is the longest train it has ever pulled. Someone's got a squeak to it, so it sounds like I've got like a dry lubrication on cylinders. I then broke out the Jinty, which was the engine in my collection that Tom hated least of all, which meant he was happy for me to keep operating, and suggested that I tried out doing some shunting. This amused me intently, and Tom was happy enough to let me get on it for the rest of the show. Which of course was a mistake on his behalf, because when he wasn't looking and I'd managed to shunt the train away, the pannier made another appearance trundling up and down the line. All too soon however, the day came to an end and it was time to pack up and go home. It had been a really great day at the Whitwell and Reapham and if you want to do it, coming up this weekend on the Sunday, it's all happening again and I'm going to be there with another layout so do come along and say hi. If you want more information on the Whitwell and Reapham, their website is over there in the video description. And if you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking somewhere over there for the gala at the Whitwell and Reapham or somewhere down there for another model railway show. And we'll catch you next time and see you at the show.